gospel this morning is according to Mark in the first chapter. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And as he went a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were at their boat mending their nets. And immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat and the hired men and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Sometimes God walks into our lives unexpectedly and we may not recognize him because we have defined him in our own minds, what he should look like, what he should do, what he would say to us. And so it is in this morning's gospel, these men who fish at a moment in time are approached by this man, this Jesus of Nazareth. He says very, very simply, follow me, I'll make you fish for people. And they follow him, which is almost preposterous when you think about it. If 
you ask yourself if somebody comes up to you and says, follow me, you want some credentials. You want a name, you want to know what this person is up to. But they don't, which seems ridiculous in many ways. It doesn't make much sense because that's not something we would do in our own common sense, but they do. Then he goes on and he calls more. He calls John, James, son of Zebedee. They're in their boat with their father. It's a family business. Zebedee and sons. Fishers. They leave their father and the hired men in the boat and they follow him. And they haven't the slightest idea what they're getting into, but somehow there's something very attractive about this man and they do it. And so we look at this story and we say to ourselves, what would that mean to me? Well, how does it figure into my life? That's back then, that's 2,000 years ago. After all, life is different for them. They're waiting for some type of Messiah, somebody who will kick Rome out, restore the kingdom of David, get a kingship going. We want the past, it was so beautiful back then. And they've all been disappointed, by the way, because Jesus isn't the first man that has come along to proclaim he is a Messiah. Others have tried, others have failed. And then comes along this guy from Nazareth and says, follow me. And so I think of that story of that pastor who tested his future congregation standing in front of them, totally disguised. They liked what they saw a week, two weeks before. It looked good to them when he was all neatly pressed, sure was knew how to say the right things and they knew how to ask the right questions, they sure did. But now in this new form, he stands before them and they are starkly crazy. Say to ourselves, this isn't exactly what we had in mind. Until he pulls off the beard, takes off his old clothes and underneath him is a suit. He goes, remember me? Now we do. We just prefer this form rather than the other one. And he said, well, in the text where John says in Mark's Gospel, follow me and I will make you fish for people, they followed and they didn't know what they were getting into. So he asked them point blank, what were you looking for when you called me? My knowledge, the way I was dressed, the right answers, I want to suggest that every time you walk into this church, every time the choir rehearses an anthem, every time I prep a sermon, every time you respond, and every time you sing the psalm back and forth between psalm chanter, every time we do that, we are living out those words that says, follow me and I will make you fish for people. You've been doing it all your life. So the surprise is Every now and then the surprise comes along in our community, which makes it real in terms of what we're called to do, doesn't it? We're called to do certain things that maybe we weren't up to before. In the calling last Sunday, we had our annual meeting and we moved swiftly because we had to do the sermon, uh, the, rather the funeral for Dr. Bell. And we had to pull things very quickly. Follow me and I'll make you fish for people, yes. And so the people in this church got together and they pulled together a wonderful repast after the service was over. And various musicians came in in order to honor this man's memory. Follow me and I'll make you fish for people, yes. And that's how you do it. We do it all the time in every way. It just doesn't seem that it's all that new. Okay told us news this morning that Barb Kipp's mother, who we've been praying for week after week, going into Alzheimer's in and out of the hospital. She went home from the hospital just recently. It all looked good and she died. Last night, Jay. So, Barb, and her sorrow is going to be up there in Madison, where her mother is. And we're down here. And we're going to be asked to be fishers of people and how we respond what we do to support this our sister of Christ. And as time goes on, we're going to do Lenten services. We're going to look out into the future and we have no idea what we really mean when we said, yes, I will follow you. 
my baptism is on me, and so whatever you ask, I know it may be a surprise, but I'm willing to do what you call me to do, like Andrew, like Peter, James, John, who in an instant decided that I'm not sure what I'm getting into here, but I'm going to do it. <coughs> so every Sunday when we gather, we're really not sure what we're getting into in this service, what we're called to do, or even what we may be called to do tomorrow. But this text tells us over and over again, we are called to be those followers, where God will lead us where we do not know, and the paths that we haven't walked on before, and they'll seem strange, they'll seem odd, like that man dressed up in those rags in front of that community who seemed so strange and odd, <coughs> was the very person that they wanted to call to be their pastor, only he was in a new disguise, until he opened their eyes and said, I'm here, I'm here with you. It's just that you didn't expect me to come this way. And that is how the mystery of God is. It comes in those unexpected ways. It pounces into our lives and says, are you willing to follow me now? This isn't going to be easy. And it never is sometimes. And other times it's joyful. I'm looking down at this baby and thinking about the moment when I'm going to pour water over her head and <coughs> mark of the cross of Christ forever that we will rejoice with her mother and her father. Follow me. And you will baptize people. Follow me, and you will bury the people of the dead. Follow me, and you will marry people, bring them together for a life joined in unity. Follow me, and all of those things that make life unexpected, expected, and otherwise. So it is. The Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. of things that we cannot understand. As we read this morning's gospel, we hear how they took aside everything they knew in order to follow you. And we who have known you all these years, let us be surprised. Let us be ready when you call us and you say to us, follow me and I will make you fish for people. Give us that good grace to be the people of God here at St. Luke be the people who speak your name from one generation to another, baptizing, burying, rejoicing, marrying, confirming. And in each one of those things, <coughs> we will indeed be fishing for you to bring new people to your grace. And all of these things we pray in the Holy Spirit in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.